you all for uh, for being here. The purpose of this briefing is to s discuss and provide updates on several recent shootings in our city. Unfortunately, gun crime remains our greatest threat, um, both in the city and in the county. I'm joined by Sheriff Leon Lott, uh, Major Frank O'Neill with State Law Enforcement Division. Uh, Major O'Neill commands SLED's Narcotics, Alcohol, and Vice Division. Uh, I'm going to describe our gun crime picture over the past week um, and through this weekend discuss some current steps being put in place to provide us a better capacity and operational tempo to prevent and solve violent crime moving forward. I want, as I, as I go through this crime summary, I want you just to, you know, I hope this resonates with you, just the extent of the issue we're having with, with gun crime. Um, going back to August 2nd, discharging a firearm, Covenant Road, it's in the metro region, multiple rounds were fired, property damage. Discharging a firearm, Magnolia Street, metro region, multiple rounds fired. Discharging a firearm, Lorick Circle, north region, 26 rounds fired, property damage. August 3rd, pointing and presenting a firearm on Saluda Avenue. Discharging into a dwelling on Norman Street, five casings recovered, property damage. Discharging into a dwelling on Howe Avenue, Metro Region, four casings recovered, property damage. Attempted murder on Bailey Street, one victim injured in the leg with non-life-threatening injuries. Discharging of firearms, Spears Creek, Church Road in the east. On August 4th, discharging a firearm, Duke Avenue. August 6th, discharging a firearm, Rosebud Street, north. 19 casings, property damage. An armed robbery at the Scotchman on Divine Street, South Region, a handgun's used. On August 7th, pointing and presenting on Abraham Street, North Region. Murder on Putnam Street in Metro, one victim, 76-year-old Alfonso Rowe, shot. He was the, not the intended target. His son, Devin Rowe, was. Devin Rowe's been arrested on a burglary charge. He has not been cooperative. His father was killed because somebody is targeting him because of his criminal behavior. He's not cooperative. August 9th, pointing present Holmes Avenue in the North Region. Shooting, uh, attempted murder following Springs in the North Region. One injured. Um, Zavon Green, African American male, 21 years old, uncooperative. August 10th, point and present Gabriel Street in the North Region. Shooting, five points, one injured, 17-year-old high school student, two casings recovered. Shooting, Lester Drive, the North Region, one seriously injured, multiple rounds fired. Corey McCray, African-American, 36 years old, in serious condition with um, wounds to his head. August 11th, point and present Center Street, Metro Region, and discharging a firearm, Better, Betterdale Avenue, four casings, property damage. We also had 18 shot spotter alerts, 58 rounds recorded fired, numerous casings recovered and entered into Nobbin, four guns seized, three of them being stolen. One of the incidents of, uh, of the shot spotter alert involved a group of people gathered at a grave site over off Farrow Road, where the uncle of one of the folks surrounding the grave fired a gun purportedly in recognition of the anniversary of the death of his uncle. Responding officers made a traffic stop and arrested him with a gun. So what are we doing presently? Uh, we continue to lever leverage our law enforcement partnerships and technology that's available to us. Um, you'll continue to see seamless operational investigative cooperation. Um, unlike you've never seen before, with the Sheriff's Department. We know the same offenders commit crimes in both jurisdictions. We also recognize that collaboration is imperative. Um, that is reinforced always from the Sheriff and myself. Um, with the weekly crime meetings, our officers, deputies, investigators, agents, and prosecutors all meet. That's never been done before. Um, our gang task force will continue to focus on validating gang members and most importantly, those that are associating with the validated gang members. Uh, we'll continue to leverage our real-time initiative with uh, our federal partners with ACF, ATF, and our Ceasefire Columbia 
um, is our offender call in. We will have another offender call in next month. Uh, we're currently um, reviewing our violent felons that reside in, in Columbia. As I stated before, 634 violent felons are on probation or parole in Columbia. 634. 316 reside in 29203. Another 50 are on federal probation. We have between 15 and 30 youthful offenders and juveniles that are on probation that are in our neighborhoods. We've made 825 home visits since the first of the year, uh, putting our eyes on these youthful offenders, making sure they know that we know where they are and they're supposed to be where they are. Um, we're going to con we're going to continue with our partnership uh, through the Project Safe Neighborhoods with the U.S. Attorney's Office. They have provided significant prosecutorial resources to our efforts. Continue to exploit shot spotter technology will remain data driven and intelligence driven focusing on the prolific offenders our trigger pullers and gang members what else are we doing we're up staffing i issued a directive yesterday requiring all administrative sworn personnel including lieutenants captains majors deputy chief and myself to work friday and saturday nights until further notice we'll work in all crime hot spots in our city particularly in the North Metro region, Millwood Corridor, Five Points Vista Entertainment Area. We're introducing Alistar technology. This technology is a common operating picture technology that combines multiple programs used into one picture. Uh, we, we have a lot of different systems that we use, but um, they've always been siloed. And this technology, and there's a snapshot of it up here on the board, um, integrates with our CAD, with our dispatch, so our commanders in the field can have operational awareness, situational awareness of where all our assets are. They know where our people are and where our cars are, and they'll be able to direct resources accordingly. The other um, um, feature of this is they'll be able to, from, um, from desktops in our crime center, be able to monitor pan, tilt, zoom cameras in our hotspots that we'll be deploying this week. Uh, we're also, after discussions with, with the sheriff, we're also um, appointing Jack Sheard. He's a sergeant with the police department right now, he's, and he's in the promotional process for, for lieutenant. Um, he's being named as assistant commander at the Midlands Gang Task Force. We think this will bring even greater continuity of service and seamless command and control of gang operations. We created an alert system for alcohol enforcement violations with SLED and uh, DOR incorporating criminal violations for establishments throughout the city um, to potentially de um, develop into administrative violations. In five points um, in the surrounding area, uh, this past week we've seen um, Allen and Benedict just moved in. Uh, we have USC moving in in the next few days. Um, we're, in, we're currently uh, involved in college education and crime prevention meetings with the kids in the schools. We will begin a welcome back operation uh, in the next few weeks in five points uh, where uh, officer interactions will involve warnings and then strict enforcement. Uh, SLED will be a constant presence along with the gang task force um, in both undercover and uniform capacity. We'll have real-time monitoring of our surveillance cameras in our entertainment districts, but also in our citywide crime hotspots. Um, you'll also see traffic enforcement um, in the entertainment areas to include DUI enforcement, distracted driving, and reckless driving. Citywide and in our entertainment areas. Gang members and associates can expect to interact with law enforcement. We will make lawful interactions every single time we identify you. We'll continue strict enforcements of nuisance ordinances and rental ordinances. Um, we're down to eight late night uh, establishments and five points. Um, an example of a recent nuisance um, situation was Lakeshore Village. Lakeshore Village is an apartment complex out off Garners Ferry Road. Uh, we annexed it in the middle of 2017. Since that time, um, it has been a significant drain on police resources. We've had over 1,000 calls for service, 143 documented criminal offenses, and 177 code enforcement cases. We've had a meeting with uh, their management and um, their, their legal team. 
a very productive meeting. They're taking some immediate steps to mitigate um, some of the problems, but um, we have every intention of moving forward if we don't see dramatic change um, in the immediate future. That's a drain on resources. Those are resources that we can have in other places. We're seeing some, um, some promise um, in our hot spot, or our, excuse me, in our, in our shot spotter area with some crime reduction. Um, we need that to um, um, become citywide. We recognize that. Our violent crime citywide is um, up 6%. Our property crimes are, are flat, meaning the same as this time last year. Um, so we have some work to do. We still think it's important to uh, focus on the prolific offenders and, um, and continue that, um, that intelligence-led course of action. Chair, do you have anything you want to add? Chief Holbrooks went over what we're doing, the programs we've got, the technology that we've got, but I don't want anybody to think that this is a law enforcement problem. This is a community problem. The violence we got in our community has to be dealt with by everybody in the community, not just us in law enforcement. Uh, we're doing our part, and we're going to continue to do our part, but we need help from the community. We need help from parents. There's no reasonable explanation for a 14, 15, 16 year old child to be out two or three o'clock in the morning. We see that all the time. They're out. Parents have no clue where they're at, what they're doing and what they're involved in. And when they're out at that time of night, they're usually out there getting in trouble. They're either committing a crime or they're becoming a victim of crime. All too often we have drive-by shootings. Somebody's house gets shot up. We go interview the people in the house. They have no clue that they'll tell us about, but they actually know exactly who did the shooting. You know, a parent, you know, can ask their child, I can't make that young person in that house tell us who did the shooting or what they're involved in. That parent can, that's what a parent's supposed to do, but they're not doing that. And then from that shooting, that drive-by shooting, then we'll have retaliation shooting. We don't have parents in our community that are being parents. We need parents to step up and be parents to these young people we've got out here that are victims and that are causing a lot of these crimes. It's gonna take this community to come together, uh, our elected officials, our churches, our schools, our parents, our neighborhoods. The only way we're gonna be successful is everybody gets uh, involved in this effort. We're gonna do our part, but we can't stop it by ourselves. We can continue to lock them up, we continue to seize guns, but if we don't have the community backing us and we don't have the community involved in it, it's just gonna keep going and going. So my plea, to everybody is you got to get involved if you don't then it's going to continue so help us become a partner become a partner in what we're trying to do be part of the solution not part of the problem hey there mayor steve benjamin here thanks for watching this video make sure you give it a like right below the video and don't forget to subscribe also, while you're here, be sure to check out one of our other videos or follow on our social media platforms. Thanks again. And remember, we are Columbia.